Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's Voltage Law, also known as KVL. This is going to be different than KCL, the current law, which I cover in a different video. But I'll let you know right now, we're going to be doing a little bit of KCL today. So I'll review that when we get there. Anyways, the voltage law is a way of solving voltages and currents in circuits. And the equation basically says this. The sum of all voltages in a loop, which I'll explain later, must equal zero. So it's probably best to explain this with an actual example. So let's say I have this circuit right here with all these variables for the values. If I want to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, I would say that I have to look at a loop. And there's technically three loops I have here. One is the left loop, one is the right loop, and three is the outer loop all together. And any one of these three would work. To solve this problem, we usually need two of them, which I would probably choose the red and the blue, the left side and the right side, because they're just the easiest. But before I get ahead of myself, I do need to define some currents. And there's two ways you can do this. For instance, you can define the entire loop current as I1 and this loop current as I2. And this is the way I used to teach it, but now I don't really do it that way anymore because I think it's too difficult. Instead, I'm just going to declare my currents as the series part of the circuit. So in other words, this whole thing from here to here where it's in series, I'm gonna call that whole thing I1. The direction's arbitrary, so it doesn't matter if I went this way or the other way. Let's say I2 is going down the middle resistor right there, I2. And then I3 will be going down this path like this. And here's how I would do KVL for the circuit. First, I have to choose a loop. Let's choose the left loop first. And I also need to choose a starting point, which technically doesn't matter. I'll just choose here as my starting point, And I'll go around the loop clockwise. So the first thing I'm hitting is the battery. So here's how I do KVL. Whenever I hit a battery, if I'm hitting the negative side of a battery, which this is because the longer side's positive, shorter side's negative, if I hit the negative side of a battery, I call that negative V. Technically you could call it positive V, but then everything I'm about to say is backwards. And so just go with me for now. Let's call this voltage negative V. And then the next thing I'm gonna hit in my circuit is R1. And since I'm doing KVL in this clockwise direction, the same direction as I1, which is not a coincidence, I basically did this on purpose. That means the voltage through R1 is going to be positive. Again, because the direction I'm going through KVL is the same direction as my current I1. If it was the opposite direction, I would just say minus. But anyways, the voltage through R1 just follows Ohm's law. It's I times R. So in other words, I1 times R1. So that's it for that. Next, following my blue loop, I'm hitting R2. Again, the current is going the way that I was going already with KVL. So it's plus, and then that voltage will be I2 times R2. And then finally, the last thing I hit is R4. And again, looking at my current, it's going the same way around the loop. So that's positive two. That's gonna be I1 times R4. And then this has to equal zero because it always equals zero for KVL. So all of that is for the blue loop, the left loop. And now let's do KVL for this loop, this green loop on the right. And again, I have to pick a starting point. I'll choose here. And again, I'll go around the loop like this in this clockwise direction. So the first thing I'm hitting is R2. Since the current now is going the opposite direction as the way I'm going, it's finally gonna be a negative I2 times R2. And then the only other thing I'm hitting is resistor R3. That is going the same way that I'm going around the circuit. So that will be plus I3 times R3. And then that just equals zero. And so if I wanted to solve this circuit, we notice there's three unknown variables, I1, I2, and I3. We're assuming all the resistors and the voltages are known. So there's only three unknown variables, which means I need a third equation. And that third equation would be KCL, which as a reminder, is all the currents going in 
equal the currents going out. So then scrolling back up to this picture, I just have to pick a junction. We'll choose this one up here, although I could also choose the one down here, technically. But looking at the one up here, the currents going in is only I1. The currents going out are both I2 and I3. So then the KCL equation would be I1 equals I2 plus I3. And now we have three equations to solve for my three unknown variables. It would be a long system of equations where a lot of times the numbers are not even nice numbers at the end for our answers. But if you're not good at solving system of equations with three variables, that's okay. I have a video that explains how to do it. I'll include it in the link in the description below. But assuming we're good with that, I have two problems for us to look at today. Here's the circuit, as you can see here. I want you to write the KVL equations for both the left loop and the right loop. So I encourage you now to pause the video and think about the answer, try it on your own, and when you're ready to see the solution, unpause the video. Okay, so there's a couple correct answers here, depending on where I choose for my starting point. So for the left loop here, I guess I'll choose this as my starting point. I usually like to choose right next to the battery, but technically you can choose wherever you'd like. So then if I start here and go clockwise around the circuit, first thing I'm hitting is the negative side of my battery. So then for my left loop, the first thing I'm writing is negative 12, because that was the battery. And then the next thing I'm hitting is the four ohm resistor with IA going in the direction I want it to go. So that's just gonna be plus four IA. I'm not trying to solve for IA, IB, or IC, so we can just leave it in terms of variables. And then the last thing I'm hitting is this eight ohm resistor. And again, since IB is going the way I want it to go, it's just gonna be plus eight times IB. And that equals zero. And that's gonna be our answer for our left loop. And then for the right loop, going back to my picture, I have to choose a new starting point. I'll basically choose the same one I chose earlier and then we're going clockwise around, although I could go counterclockwise if I really wanted to. But if I go clockwise around, the first thing I'm hitting is the eight ohm resistor with IB pointing the wrong way. So in other words, that is gonna be negative eight IB. And then the next thing I hit is the 16 ohm resistor with IC going the same way as I'm going. And it's gonna be plus 16 IC. That is going to equal zero. And there, we're done. And now I just have one more question today. This one will be more involved, don't worry. So here is the next circuit. As you can tell, there are two batteries. Whenever you have two or more batteries in the circuit, then almost certainly you have to use KCL or KVL, or both. And that's exactly what I'm gonna tell you to do. I want you to use KVL and KCL to find the voltage and current through each resistor. And I would ask you to do this on your own. I mean, you still can if you want, but I think this is very complicated. So I'm gonna be doing this with you today. So I guess the first thing I would do is I would declare my three currents. Let's say I1's going this way, like this. I2 is going that way. And I3 will go that way. By the way, I am choosing the direction of these currents pretty arbitrarily. But one thing I do know if I end up getting a negative current for one of my currents, like for instance, let's say I1 is negative one amp, then what that means is the current I1 actually flows the other way, and I'll probably change that in the problem. Like I'll actually draw I1 going the other way, so it's a positive current. But anyways, I have two loops here. So first I'll do the top loop, and to make it easier for myself, I am gonna draw a smaller version of the top loop right here so it doesn't get too cluttered. So I'll choose this as my starting point and I'll choose to go this way around the circuit. So the first thing I'm hitting is the 40 ohm resistor with the current going the way I want it to. So that means it's positive 40 I1 to start out. Next thing I'm hitting is the 30 ohm resistor with I2 going the wrong way. So that's minus 30 I2. And the last thing I'm hitting is the positive side of my battery. Remember, when you hit the positive side of the battery, it's plus 12, and that's all going to equal zero. So right now, two unknowns, which means I need at least two equations. For the bottom loop, this is what the circuit's gonna look like. And again, if I do KVL here, and let's say we're starting here and going this way 
around my loop. First thing I'm hitting is the negative side of the 12 volt battery. So that's minus 12. And then looks like the next thing I'm hitting is the 30 ohm resistor with I2 going the same way that I'm going. So plus 30 I2. And then the next thing I hit is the negative side of the battery. So minus eight. And then finally, I3 is going the same way I want it to. So plus the 50 ohm times I3. And that's going to equal zero. And if I write my equations side by side, I can see I have one, two, three unknown variables, I1, I2, and I3, which means I am gonna need one more equation, and this will come from KCL. So again, looking back at the original circuit, I'll choose this junction right here, and the currents going in have to equal the currents going out. So in other words, I3 has to equal I1 plus I2. And that's gonna be my third equation, so I can solve for all the currents and voltages that I need. So there's a couple ways we can solve here, but the first thing I'm gonna recommend doing is labeling these equations one, two, and three. This is not necessary, but it is gonna help me keep track of everything I'm doing later in the problem. So the first thing I'll do is, since I'm already solved for I3 in this equation, I'll just plug in I3 right there into equation two. And so now equation two is gonna look like, uh, actually I can combine negative 12 and negative eight to give myself negative 20 plus 30 I2 plus 50 times the quantity I1 plus I2 and that's gonna equal zero. Further simplifying or solving for one of my variables, I need to distribute 50 to both of these. So negative 20 plus 30 I2 plus 50 I1 plus 50 I2 equals zero. And now I have to decide if I wanna solve for I1 or I2. I'll solve for I1, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna need all three eventually. So the first thing I'll do is I'll combine the 30 and the 50 I2 to make that 80 I2. And then I'm gonna move everything that's not I1, I'm gonna move it to the other side. So in other words, plus 20 on both sides and minus 80 I2 on both sides, giving me 50 I1 equals 20 minus 80 I2. And then all I gotta do now is divide both sides by 50. When I'm doing this, I don't wanna put it as one big fraction. I definitely wanna split up the fractions to make it better. And when I do this, I get I1 equals 20 over 50 is 0.4, and then minus 1.6 I2. It's gonna be a lot of decimals here. But again, this was equation two, now simplified as much as possible. And the only one I have not used yet is equation one. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna plug in this value of I1 into I1 right there, and then I'll only have I2 left, which is where I can solve. So 40 times the quantity, 0.4 minus 1.6 I2 minus 30 I2 plus 12, equals zero. Now I'll distribute the 40 to both of these. That's gonna be 16 minus 64 I2 minus 30 I2 plus 12 equals zero. And then combining like terms, it's gonna be 28 minus 94 I2 equals zero. I believe you know what to do from here. I'll add 94 I2 to both sides and then divide by 94 giving me I2 equals 0.298 amps. And there's I2. Now if I wanna find I1, I'll go back to equation two right here, where we said I1 equals 0.4 minus 1.6 I2. And so then just plugging in 0.298 for I2, I get negative 0.077 amps for I1. Remember what I said about negative currents it means whatever direction I chose for I1 was actually wrong. The current does not go that way, it's supposed to be going that way. Now since I chose the current, it doesn't matter if I switch the direction or not. Like I can keep it like this picture, I just need to say it's a negative current, or I can literally erase it, draw this line, and make it positive 0 0.077. But sometimes the question gives you I1 in this direction, 
And when that happens, you have to keep it as a negative current. You don't have a choice because the question told you that I1 points this way. But at the end of the day, the positive and negative doesn't matter that much. What's so much more important is the actual value, the 0 0.077, the magnitude. And then finally, if I want to find I3, probably the easiest way to do that is just to say I3 equals I1 plus I2 from equation 3. So remember, I1, I kept the negative, so still negative 0 0.077, and then plus I2, 0.298, that's going to give me a current of 0.221 amps. So then finally, going back to the question, it asked for the voltage and the current through each resistor. We know for the 40 ohm it was I1, we know for the 30 ohm it was I2, and we know for the 50 ohm it's I3. So then how do I find the voltages? You just have to do Ohm's law, V equals I times R. And so for the 40 ohm, 40 times I1, negative 0.077, is 3.08 volts. The fact that it's positive or negative doesn't matter. I never have to indicate the direction for voltage on that resistor, unless the question asks. For the 30 ohm, that's 30 times current 2, 0.298 which is going to be 8.94 volts. And then finally for the 50 ohm, 50 times I3, 0 0.221, gives me 11.05 volts. And there, that's all the currents and all the voltages for all the resistors. And that's basically it. That's how we do KCL and KVL to solve circuit problems, especially circuit problems with multiple batteries in them. So that's going to do it for us today. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.